Well, folks, just got a little bit of a, little bit of a story here. I was thinking about California before the sin book starts. So you know, most likely, <coughs> that, <coughs> that there was a gold rush in California. And this gold rush started after gold was found in California in 1848. Think about 1848. This is the same year that the United States finished its war with Mexico that got them California in the first place. So the gold rush was sort of the very first thing that happened in U.S. California. And men, mostly, went to dig for gold in California from all over from Ireland, from New York, from Massachusetts, from Chile, from China. The first hanged murderer in the state of California under U.S. rule was a Chilean. And some men got rich digging for gold. Some men did okay, some went bust. Some men got rich selling things to people to use to dig for gold. Some women did the same. Some men and women set up hotels, boarding houses, barber shops, and so on. With all that gold churning around, it was a good time to start a business. But off in the hills was where the wealth was coming from. When it eventually petered out, the men around the campfires could no longer make money that way. The prices, which had shot up to ridiculous amounts of gold for small objects and services, came back down again. And by the middle 1850s, people were beginning to come from the eastern United States and other places to farm, to uh, shopkeepers. There was even the beginnings of the notion of building a railroad east from California, uh, the famous Pacific Railroad that took forever to be built because the northern states wanted it in the north and the southern states wanted it in the south. But there was a railroad built a little way north from Sacramento the original railroad. Sacramento could be reached from San Francisco by steamboat. There was very little population in Southern California, San Diego, Los Angeles barely existed. Monterey, the old Spanish capital, had some population. And San Francisco, Oakland, and Sacramento each became somewhat significant. San Francisco was the big West Coast metropolis uh, into the 20th century, and certainly With gold inland, the China trade to the west, and the beginnings of building a railroad to the east, San Francisco and the Bay Area and Sacramento were a magnet all through the 1850s, and then in the 1860s during the Civil War when the, um, when the actual railroad construction started in 1862, they became even more of a magnet. This was going to be an important commercial place. It would be a gateway between the Far East by sea and the rest, and the United States by land. It would be a gateway between South America and Western North America by sea. Um, before the railroad was finished, it was one end of a very complicated steamer route from, say, London to, San to Panama, London to Aspinwall across the Panama Railway to Panama City, up by steamship. San Francisco was even, uh, when there was a huge fire in a church in Chile in 1863, the news got to Australia by a San Francisco newspaper reprinting a story from a Chilean newspaper, and that San Francisco newspaper, the Alta California, making it across the ocean to Australia uh, in uh, probably a sailing ship rather than a steamer for that long of a voyage at that point. So San Francisco was initially a kind of a rough camp, later a port city um, by the 1880s and 90s, trying to be quite fancy. But in the 1850s, lots of little wooden buildings and lots of people that um, your sort of white Protestant East Coast Americans tended to despise. A uh, fair number of Irish Catholics, fair number of Mexicans, uh, and a fair number of Chinese, as you'll see. 
So this was one of the cities in the world where <coughs> people from different groups and different cultures, uh, people of different citizenships came together and made new things in the world. It was probably in San Francisco that the Chinese American, as in the Chinese, the American food cooked by Chinese restaurant chefs only in the United States, chop suey, was invented. Because one of the things that the Chinese did in California was have restaurants, and you'll read more about this. Um, but it was a place where people from, men and women both, from the East, uh, Eastern United States could come out and start new lives. So when the Chinese were immigrants from another country, the Anglo-Americans were in a way immigrants because their country had just taken California from Mexico, so the kind of local people were Spanish-speaking Mexicans. Uh, and all these groups had to kind of negotiate a way to have a city. There's a certain amount of violence and oppression and unequal power along the way, as you'll see. So that's at one end of the book that you're reading about. Uh, I think I'll say a bit more about Hong Kong when I have a lecture with light and a map. But the California sort of rough frontier story seemed very appropriate throughout here. Thank you, folks.